All right, and we're back with the end of Act 5 for the true story of Arcane, created by Shard Undred. I am Jay Burrito. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I did record this True Colors interlude uh, at the end of the last video, but decided to split it out into its own video because it's very long. It's about 30 minutes. Uh, I do make the comment that I think it was too long, but that is contextualized by the fact that I was recording this right after Dark Depths, so I was like an hour 30 in, and I was recording Dark Depths right after Dark Blades. So I had been recording for like three hours, and I was getting really tired, and my voice was getting worn out, but overall, I think this interlude's great. Again, it is very long, so that's why I decided to split it out. So this is uh, your Warcraft 3 Upload Day uh, All Lore Edition. So enjoy this, and then uh, next, next time we come back, we'll be on to something new. Enjoy. True Colors, it's the end. We made it to the end. Would you look at that? Not sure how long this will be. Might be really bulky, but that's okay, because this playable mission wasn't super long. It's just, you know, the voice, it's a, it's a lot to read. The demons have been pushed back for the time being, and Gardon returns to the capital of Carol. In his absence, Reynald Van Durs has begun to conscript farmers and villagers to fight. At the same time, elven forces are being removed from the front lines, and the Golden Guard has remained rather passive. Meanwhile, hordes of orcs are running through the realm. While some seem to kill anything that stands in their way, many just seem to be on the run from the demons. The ploys of the undead are still unknown to most of the living, as their newest champion, Ornassian, descends to the depths of the dead mountain, and unbeknownst to all, yet another force has decided that the time to act has come. I not wait, another force? Commander Derek, if you're reading this, it means that I've fallen in battle against the demons. These words are meant for your eyes and your eyes only. I've made sure that the magical seal on this letter would only break once you hold it in your hands. Is the other force Derek's mercenaries? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I didn't get lost during your retreat from Lore. I deliberately removed myself from the rest of our forces and joined one of the garrisons in Carol, for I know who will await me in the capital. My father-in-law, Reynold Van Durs himself. You will think I'm foolish for doing so and putting my life in danger like that. And you would be right. I'm a fool for doing this, just as I was a fool to trust Janethus. But I couldn't meet with my father-in-law. Not like this. Not yet. He's a man who tolerates neither flaws nor mistakes. Arrogant, maybe, but for good reason. I had hoped to redeem myself in his eyes. Not completely, but at least a tiny little bit by holding back the demon onslaught, side by side with the royal army. A part of me sees it as my duty to try and mend the wounds between the kingdoms of the Empire as well. Well, since you've received this missive, it means that I have failed. I can only hope that I have met my end in honorable battle, doing my duty. I am sending you my last will with this as well as your final payment. I have also sent a letter to my father-in-law to inform him of this. I have been thinking a lot about this, and my final wish is that you and your mercenaries go after the orcs, who have destroyed our defenses in lore. You are right about them. Their latest movement suggested that they were planning something big. Many think that it was my departure that doomed our defenses, but the battle was already lost. The orcs are much more dangerous than we thought. I have heard that the demons slaughtered that a lot of them. Serves them right. Yet they still pose a threat. Find them, Derek. Find the orcs and destroy them. Once they can no longer sabotage us, rejoin the combined defense efforts of the Empire and the Kingdoms. Let my sacrifice not have been in vain. This is our final contract. I want to thank you for all the assistance you've provided me over the years. Signed, Sir Larig Goldheart. And that's probably the last we're ever going to hear about Larig, if I had to guess. We have our orders. We're moving out within the next two hours. Sir Larig is dead. He fell in battle. His final wish was that we hunt down the orcs who caused the fall of lore. Orcs? There's an invasion of demons going on as we speak. How can we focus on literally anything else than that? Logan, the bro? We're mercenaries, Logan. We're being paid to follow your orders, not to question them. The man who paid us is dead, Derek. You can neither pay nor command us. The only reason he sends us after the orcs is because they sent him running to Genethus with his tail between his legs and lore. His letter included our final payment. In addition, he sent a letter to High Lord Inquisitor Reynald Venturs, his father-in-law as well, Logan. With all due respect, sir, the High Lord has not really done much to improve our situation on the continent. I doubt that he cares for the fate of the orcs that much. From a tactical perspective, they're... 
They're the ones who broke through our defenses in Lore. Intentionally or not, they're the reason why Lore fell to the demons. Yes, their armies have been routed by the demons and their homes were burned to the ground, but there's still quite a few of them out there. Enough to cause trouble. We will follow our orders and fulfill our last contract. A mercenary's reputation is his most important asset. It wouldn't do any good if we didn't do what we're paid for. I'm aware that you never had much love for our employer, Logan, but I expect you to follow your orders. I know that the war against the demons means to you. I know what the war against the demons means to you personally, but you cannot let that blind you. Tepid pause. The orcs are a menace that the king has been unable to deal with and are allowed to roam freely for far too long. We will end this threat, and once this is done, we will rejoin the war against the demons. You have my word on that. And what if nobody wants to hire us? We'll join the fight against the demons no matter what. Dismissed. Door brick. Blood claw, I see you are back. Yes, the demons have been pushed back. What's going on here? Why is the Golden Guard not moving out to attack the demons? You should ask Van Dorst, not me. He sent several companies of the Golden Guard to key locations in the kingdoms in the Elven Kingdom. That's all I know. You surprised me, Dorbrick. I expected you to charge right back into combat. I could have used someone like you in my last battle. I'm not going to join forces with you, Bloodclaw. I never trusted you, that's no secret, but... That's not why I'm not rejoining the fight against the demons. What orders did Vandors give you? We're going to deal with the orcs, once and for all. The orcs? I understand they defeated you in lore, but they're not the main threat. The demons. Do you think I don't know that? Just how stupid do you think I am, Bloodclaw, huh? What's wrong with you, Dorbrick? Ever since the fall of Lore, your behavior has been rather... unusual. Tepid pause. You really don't get it, do you, Bloodclaw? Of course you don't. How could you? You don't know what it's like to watch your friends getting slaughtered because you don't have any. Oh! <laughs> For you, they're all just tools. Losing one is inconvenient at best. Destroyed. Fergan, Romarius, Sellier, they're all dead. Dead! Because I failed them. Because I could not hold the line. I'm Dorbrick Berengar of the Bull Regiment. They expected me to crush anything coming my way. And I couldn't. You're a great warrior, Dorbrick. But even you are just one man. The kind of man that breaks demon skulls and lifts horses to break them in two with their bare hands. But still, just one man. I mentored them, Bloodclaw. I mentored Sellier and Blen. And where did that bring them? Sellier's dead and Blen is in prison. Romarius, he was a good lad. A bit stiff and arrogant in public, but a fine soldier and leader. He deserved better. And Fergan? Fergan. His last words were, I'm sorry, Dorbrick. After years of hostility between the two of us, he apologized for pursuing his career. How could I have ever felt that he betrayed the Bulls? How could ever I have said these things to him? To him, someone who used to be a brother to me. And now he's dead. Wine. The orcs must pay. I'll finish what I started. I will break their skulls. I'll tear them apart. I'll rip their black hearts out and feed it to their wolves. I'll avenge our fallen. Starting with the coward whose flying beasts killed Fergan. Oh, now we got a vendetta against, uh... Gorthog. Dorbrick, I understand you want to avenge the fallen, but think about this. Don't just run around looking for certain death. Use your brain. What good is your revenge if the demons destroy everything? We have a war to win. I have my orders, and I'm willing to go through with them. You can't persuade me, Bloodclaw. And I'm not the only one. The remaining regiments are being ordered to go after the orcs. All of them. All of them? Vandurus wants us to prove ourselves. He doesn't think that we have the strength to fight the demons if we can't even deal with the greenskin pillagers. Also, he has other plans to win this war than brute force, but I'll let him tell you that himself. My men are waiting for me, Bloodclaw. Farewell. Farewell, Dorbrick. I see you've returned, Gardon. What is that animal doing in here? Praxius, get that dire wolf out of here. This is no forester battlefield. It has no place here. 
Snarl. As you wish, High Lord. Hey, Zed. Long time no see. Woof. Good to see you, too. Woof. I'll bring him to the Royal Gardens. You can pick him up there later, Gardon. I'll make sure he won't be bored. Go ahead, Paladin. Tepid pause. Let's go. Oh. Sir Praxius was nice to the dog. That bumps him up in my character rankings. Word of Lyric's death has already reached me prior to your arrival. It's most unfortunate that he had to die in combat. There was nothing we could have done. He was already dead when we arrived. Yes, just like the soldiers who accompanied you died on the way. We had to travel through a forest filled with orcs, demons, and even through a murloc village, Venturs. With more troops. My own troops, even. We could have saved more lives. Perhaps. The reports about this alliance between the orcs and the murlocs were quite intriguing. We're still unsure if it was a legitimate threat or if the orcs were just enslaving other creatures there. It's good that you sabotaged their alliance by killing the orcs, but I wonder if this really brought the cooperation of the two races to an end. Regardless, you're to be complimented about your success against the demons. I would have been able to accomplish much more if you hadn't stripped me of my power. I've also noticed that you've been what you've been doing in my absence. Nothing but forcing farmers and villagers into your service. You haven't even tried to fight back at all. You said you'd assume command to win this war. How are you going to do that from here, I wonder? And how is sending the regiments off to hunt the orcs helping in that regard? How will you, the man who pushed the demons off of Rodan, defeat them here when you do nothing? Also, I'd like to know what your plans are you have for the elves. You moved their forces to the back lines and sent a large amount of Golden Guard into their forests, even though they're clearly not needed there. And finally, I noticed that some of my men are no longer at the capital. Where have you sent them? They never were your soldiers, Gardon. They're the Empire's soldiers. You do well to remember that unless you want me to believe that you, like Dorton, have forgotten that fact. Your men serve the Empire's interests, not yours. They've been stationed all over the kingdoms to do so. The Empire's interests are my interests. Very well, then, Gardon. If you insist, I believe it's fair to tell you. Also, your father would have wanted you to know. Know what? What is this scheme of yours? Gardon, this is Lord Marin. He's the best engineer the entire Empire who can create machines even beyond the Dwarves' capabilities. He is the mind behind our destructor airships. While you've been fighting the demons, he has completed his plans. He has created a weapon that will allow us to beat the demons. And just what kind of weapon is that supposed to be? I could spend the whole day explaining the exact function of it, but I think it's, it'd be too difficult for you to understand its complexity, so I'll cut it short and talk in words that are easily understood. It's a stationary cannon that can fire on everything here to the void. In English, Doc! In English! The cannon is a perfect symbiosis of magic and technology. Its magic makes it destroy our enemies without leaving our lands in ashes. The mechanical parts are designed to collect and concentrate its magic. It should be more than enough to keep them at bay for long enough. So that was your plan all along? Build a cannon to defeat the demons? Hmm. For a time, it could work, but they'll find a way in the long term. We should build this cannon and use it to push the demons back to the void. Then we march into their lands and bring the cannon there, to Transporting the cannon will be a logistical challenge, one that could be dealt with, of course, but there's no need to do such a thing. We're not going to march into enemy territory. What do you... We're going to leave this continent, Gardon. The, the Emperor has decided that we've wasted more than enough forces here. The war against the demons on this continent has been going on for far too long, and even after all these decades, there's been no real or lasting success. Additionally, the kingdoms have been rather, willing, rather unwilling to cooperate, and we're not blind to their actions. If they don't want our aid, then they shall have to live without it. 
You coward. You are responsible for this. Why would the Emperor have sent so many forces to this continent if he didn't want to continue? He personally ordered me to come here and continue this war. He never would have abandoned this. Mind your tone, Gardon. Don't forget who you're talking to. All I'm doing, all I've always been doing, has been ordered by the Emperor himself. He alone made this decision. He alone ordered me to take your forces away from you. I had nothing to do with either. Oh, really? Tell me then. What are you even doing here? Why send forces after the orcs? Why deploy the oh-so-great Golden Guard if the continent was to be abandoned? We've been sent here by the Emperor to evacuate the Elves. What? The Emperor and Queen Renova of the Elves are to be married. She asked the Emperor to bring her people to safety, and he has agreed to do so. As for the Orcs, they have humiliated the Empire and are therefore to be taken down for good. The Emperor sent me because he trusts me, while well, you have lost his trust with your recent actions. To hell with his trust. He's just gonna leave the kingdoms and our allies to die for some elven bitch. <laughs> Soldiers, leave this room at once. I'll be waiting outside, General. I'll continue my work, High Lord. You know where to find me. Don't censor the bitch. He, he said bitch, all right? <laughs> the Emperor's decision is... Oh, my monitor went to sleep. This is a long one. The Emperor's decision is final, but I can't read the rest. Be mindful the next time you want to force my hand. Don't tell me you have a problem with that. Is that what you really think, Gardon? You think that I'm just waiting for the right moment to strike you down? You think I would enjoy your death? You deny it? Despite everything, you're still family, Gardon. Even if you don't get the treatment you might expect. You're walking a dark path, but I know all too well what brought you onto it. I still think you chose it because it was easier than following the right path, however. I didn't come here to get lectured by you. The Emperor, he just wants to give up just like that? I can't believe he'd be that weak. He considers this continent lost, Gardon, and given the circumstances, I see myself forced to agree. The Kingdoms lost this fight a long time ago. It was only thanks to us that they could hold on, and now they're starting to turn their backs on us. What choice do we have? I disagree. I think there's still a possibility to win this war, especially if we use that cannon of yours. Anyway, what about these rumors I've heard? A rebellion in Pyru? The rumors about these rebels are true. A noble in Pyru, Lord Chorus Retka, has killed the king of Pyru and his family. He rules Pyru now and leads his forces against the Empire. Already his forces have managed to conquer parts of the Kingdom of Toran. Any word from General Whitefield? He was in command of all the forces of Pyru. I don't think he just let the rebellion take over like that, or as he joined them. The rebellion started while he was here, in the capital. We don't know what happened when he returned, but we assume that he either joined the rebels willingly or by force. Either way, we haven't heard from him. Very well then, I'll gather what other forces you haven't sent away to Pyru and deal with the rebels myself, since you don't seem too eager to act on your own. Your men won't suffice. The rebels are too numerous. I've already decided to put Lady Cora Redfist under your command, along with a company of the Golden Guard. Your tone leaves a lot to be desired, but I won't send you into certain death. Your father wouldn't approve. King Dorton wishes the elven exile, Lorene, to keep an eye on your actions. She will join you as well. Your latest victory seems to have impressed the king. Either that or your charm had quite the impact on the elf. You and the Emperor seem to have that in common. I'll deal with the traitors now, and when I return, Van Duris, we'll have words about the future of this continent. I'm not going to just give it up. Of course not. You just had to complicate matters, didn't you? General, this woman here approached me, claiming that she represents a group of people who want to do business with you. Indeed. It's a pleasure to meet you, General. My name is Jadira. As your sergeant here has correctly informed you, I represent a certain group of people who would like to support your cause. Finances go burr? 
Is that so? Where is your group in lore? And how do you want to support me? You don't look like a soldier, so I doubt that you would join me in battle. A sharp mind and tongue, I see. Very good. You're... Of, you're correct, of course, General. I'm no soldier. I can wield neither sword no, nor bow to support you in battle. My group, however, can support you in other ways, with resources and gold. I see. And what would this price of such support... What would be the price of such support? Or are you doing this out of charity? I don't believe in charity, my lord. Let's just say there is a group of people who, while not caring much for the political goals of the realms, do have interests that a certain threat from the east would interfere with. Said group would be willing to support anyone who is fighting this menace without asking for interest rates, but instead being interested in other things. Yo, this is- it's gold axe. It's gotta be gold axe, right? That's the only other thing that's consistent with this type of idea? Let's just say that the continent will need stability. Stability needs economy. Economy is investment. We could provide... All we want is to be part of the system that brings stability. I'll be clear. You're from the Empire. You're familiar with banks. The kingdoms rely on merchant guilds instead, and we would like to change that. And their constant warring, if left to their own devices, is well known and remembered by investors such as yourself. Now imagine if there was just a single bank led by investors, under your control, of course, to bring the entirety of arcane prosperity as you bring security. A.K.A. totalitarianism? I know you have an economic mind behind that dark helmet and attitude, General Bloodclaw, but even you need resources. Allow us to provide. The High Lord has left me little options. I believe we have a deal. Do not even think of crossing me. I'm well versed in the ways of breaking those who cross me on and off the battlefield. I assure you, General, we're well aware of what happens to those who cross you, or stand in your way. We have no intention of sharing their fate. It will be a pleasure doing business with you. Does this mean we're going to start every mission with 10,000 gold, and we'll never have to mine again? The answer is no, but hey, wouldn't that be cool? That's got to be like the gold, the, the secret of gold X chieftain, right? Edie, are you alright? Cory, is that you? What are you doing here? This is so long! <laughs> I'm so sorry, sister. I tried to stop them when I heard that they'd imprison you, but they wouldn't listen. Are you all right? You look different. Very different. Yes, sister, I'm all right, apart from being locked in this cell, that is. I have to get out, Cory. I have the power to save the Empire. I cannot do that from here. What are you talking about? Cory, I found a way to attain real power. I can turn the tide of this war. All I need is to actually use it. And I already know how. Let me out of this cell and I'll show you the gift and teach you how to use it too. We can save the Empire together. So the rumors are true then. You've fallen for demonic magic. I can control it, Cory. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. You've always understood me. Please, let me out of here, my sweet sister. Tepid pause. I didn't want to believe it, but it's true. My sister has turned into a monster. I've seen it in your eyes. I have heard it in your voice. You're not my sister, Edil, anymore. You're possessed with demonic power. Cory, I can use it and control it. I can explain it. I promise you, you'll understand. Do you even listen to yourself? Edie, please resist its influence. Can't you see that it's completely controlling you? We're family. Fight it. For me. For mom. For... Cora? F father Leave. But... I told you to leave, Cora. But, as you wish, Father. Hello, Father. I haven't expected... Tepid pause. Tepid pause. I remember the day you were born. You cried the entire day and night and wouldn't let your mother sleep. You required constant attention to remain alive. A sickly baby close to death from birth. Your condition improved as you grew over older. We were hopeful that you'd one day grow into a strong woman to make us proud. Our hopes were misplaced. You might have lost your sickness, but you remained weak. Weak enough to fall for the promises of demon scum. I'm not weak, father. I... Silence! You've always been the disgrace of my family. You've always been weak and were supposed to marry into an influential family, but instead of obeying your father's wishes, you run away! You've left your own fam- you've left your own family. I won't take any more of this. I will- 
I cannot remember allowing you to speak, girl. As if your weakness wasn't shameful enough, you also had to fall to demonic influence. You're a pest. It sickens me to think about my blood running through your veins. You think you have any power now? You're wrong. You've always been weak, and no matter what powers you gain access to, you will stay weak. I can see it now. You are worthless. D daddy Don't, Edel. Don't. If I were you, I'd commit suicide and continue such a life. You're not part of my family anymore. Jesus. I spit on you in your whole existence. Should you ever find some idiot who was blind and stupid enough to mate with you, I'd spit on him too. Should you ever have children? I'd be there to spit on them as well. They, their children, and their children's children. I spit on all of them. I mean, you'll be dead by then, dude. That's like four generations. How could I have been so wrong about you? Tepid pause. A little longer this time, though. Multiple ellipses. One day, one day, father, I'll make you pay for all you've done. Your life will end the most painful way possible. Yes, it will, my dear. We will make sure of that once we get out of here. He will gladly help you with that. The time has come. Just say the word, Master. We will be ready. He literally just said the time has come. Yo, this guy! He bought it then? The offer? Yes. The intention? Not so much, I don't think. A charming fellow, that blood claw, isn't he? Already a threat before the cooperation has even begun, but oh well. Hatred and anger tends to make one irrational and lose some manners from time to time, doesn't it? Gold axe! Got him! Called it! Well, he signed the contract. He gets our resources, and in exchange, we rise with him. A mutually beneficial alliance. Indeed, but I'd be surprised if a contract meant anything more to him than the paper it was written on. Stay true to your word and don't do anything that would make him think you may consider backstabbing him. We have nothing to gain from betraying him to begin with. Current events are bad for business. Not to mention I had to move out of my beloved home because some maniacs decided to burn everything to the ground. Confirmed? He was on the York Islands. He's the Golex chieftain. Not a very profitable thing to do, I might add. While they may have been able to obtain some stolen artifacts, I highly doubt that their worth was high enough to make up the cost of such an operation. Truly, the Red Fist needs some advice on financial matters. Does he have a hat, too? He's got a top hat. They are irrational. I doubt they'd listen. Of course, this was highly hypothetical. You'll accompany General Bloodclaw and support him with whatever resources he asks for. I doubt he'll be willing to ask for too much. He isn't the kind of person to enjoy owing anything to others. Do not force anything on him, however. The less time he thinks about the group you work for, the better. He has no reason to mistrust us. I haven't lied to him. I want him to protect the kingdoms, not focus on us instead. Unlike others, I have no ulterior motives. War may be good for business, but the total destruction of the mortal realms isn't. Tensions in the capital are high. I'll rejoin the Goldax clan soon, just to make sure they're safe. They need their chieftain in these trying times, after all. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was too long. <laughs> Though, you know, spirits were lifted by the by that very end part. I suspected Marinogen for a while because, number one, he was in the very intro cinematic and claimed, I guess it's time we meet in person, and then the next thing that happens is the Goldex clan meets up with uh, with Rangul. So this guy probably shapeshifts into an orc. Is it Hortnog? I'm thinking no. Um, but he probably shapeshifts into an orc, and then Hortnog and Dogren are like his two top lieutenant guys. Um, and the other thing, too, is I sort of suspected with the whole Goldax um, narrative change with them being focused on, on money and, like, really only caring about money, you know, that element being added to Arcane made me think that, uh, especially because he has the hat and the monocle, to me, I'm like, oh, he's, like, kind of classy. It would make sense that there'd be a force in Arcane that only cares about, like, the financial potential gain. So Marinogen, I guess, is just, like, capitalism the character right and he'll it doesn't matter who he's helping so long as he's able to profit from it so like he said war's good for business so long as everybody doesn't kill each other at the same time and that to me seems like that's his only goal and he doesn't he it seems like he wants to stay away from other demons he doesn't want the other demons getting to him um this was in like the tip 
uh, of the previous Undead mission where it mentioned Marinogen, um, and how he was like the the granddaddy, the godfather, if you will, of like scheming demons. But it kind of seems like while he is scheming here, like he said, he doesn't have an ulterior motive. He has a very clear motive, but he is keeping himself secret from everybody else. So that's interesting. Um, I think we learn more about that Duke Redfist interaction with Edale in the future, and it's like a double fake out. Like, he's extreme, but not that extreme. He's like a bad guy, but he, I don't know if it's, if he, like, if that was Lysara playing with Edale's mind or not. It's clearer in the future, but it's also not like, oh, he wasn't mean, so he's like a good guy. It's like, oh, he wasn't mean, but he's still a bad guy kind of thing, uh, circumstance. And when I say, like, bad guy, it's, like, still morally gray, but I mean, like, he's just, like, a bad person. <laughs> you know? Uh, other than that, honestly, I don't even remember most of the rest of the cutscene because it was so long and my voice is, like, starting to go. My throat's getting a little raw and dry here, so it's it's time to leave. I like the idea with the Imperial Regiments and um, mercenary guys, I guess literally every faction, except the Iron Fist from the first human book era is now being sent to hunt the orcs. And Red Fist is after them too, so like Tribal Dominion's gonna get roasted because literally everyone is after them. Plus, event now we're gonna be in the Kingdom of Sauria, etc., etc. So curious to see how the regiments and the leaders of the regiments get, you know, weaved into the story as it continues. That'll be uh, that'll be interesting. It'll be cool to see if either they get absorbed into other factions, they kind of go rogue, they just all die. They switch sides, etc. Who knows? Um, it'll be interesting to see, because there's still a bunch of them. And as far as I know, I think Phoenix Regiment? No, Phoenix Regiment is still around. A Dragon Regiment, even though Ramirius is dead, I think there's still some element of Dragon Regiment around. Bear Regiment's totally gone, though. And um, Bull and Wolf Regiment are reduced, but still around as well. So it seems like now, again, they're all being, getting sent against the, uh, the orcs. Oh, and um, Hawk Lady, too. How could I forget? Hawk Lady. Uh, I'll see you all uh, sometime in the future, whenever the next act gets released. This one was fun. I had a good time. Thank you, Shard Uh End cutscene, again, maybe a little too long. I have no idea how better this could have been spread out. I don't know. But uh, it would have been nice to have been a little more spread out. Hey, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you for whatever comes next. Bye-bye.